With tools like Zapier, it's easy to export new emails to Google Sheets for better analysis, but the best process for exporting existing emails isn't always so obvious. Today, I'm going to show you how to automatically send data from any email to Google Sheets by just adding a simple label. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we help our members to get the most out of the software they use every day. To learn more about X-Ray services, check out our website at xray.tech. If you'd like to learn more about creating your own automated workflows, sign up for our workflow design course at course.xray.tech. And be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications for more free automation tips every single week. In this video, I'm going to show you an easy way to export any email in your Gmail inbox to Google Sheets by applying a custom label. This will let you send over any data you want from your messages, like the subject, sender, and body, or even attachments and thread IDs. All you need are accounts in Google and Zapier. Now let's get started. Here's how the finished automation works. We've got two separate Zaps. One is for emails with no attachments, while the other is for emails with attachments. I'd normally try to do this all in one automation, but there's a special Gmail trigger for new attachments, which is very useful for uploading each attachment individually. However, since the new attachment trigger obviously won't work for emails without attachments, we'll need a separate automation to handle them. With both of these automations, all we have to do is apply the appropriate label to an email in Gmail, and then its data will be sent over to Google Sheets. If the email has attachments, they're automatically uploaded to a new folder in Google Drive, and that folder is linked to the email's row in Sheets. That's how it works in a nutshell, but let's take a closer look and break down both zaps step by step. We'll start off with the simpler option. This is an automation that will work great for sending email data to Google Sheets, but it won't work so well for sending attachments. On the other hand, it's only a two-step zap, so it will work on a Zapier free plan. Let's take a look at the trigger here. The app is Gmail, and the event is new labeled email. It's really common for people to get tripped up here and select new email, but this will only work for new emails you get. Using new labeled email allows you to pick any email from the past. So if you have historical emails that you're trying to get into Google Sheets, new labeled email is definitely the way to go. This label is created inside of Gmail. So if you don't have any labels here, you need to go back to Gmail and actually create a new label. A lot of times you have these default labels like chat, sent, or inbox. But what we care about is the send to sheets, no attachment label. So that's what we've applied here. But you can make your custom label say whatever you want. Moving on to test data, you'll see your emails on the left here. If you're expecting a specific email, don't forget to click on this find new records. This will pull up any new emails you've had since the last time Zapier has pulled in emails from your inbox. And on the right, we have a bunch of data. This is going to have things like the sender, the subject, the body, attachments, and a lot more. All of it could be sent to Google Sheets or other apps, but you really don't need to go crazy here. Usually just a handful of data points will be useful for you, and that's all you need to do. This email looks great, so let's move on to the second step. We're gonna select the event lookup spreadsheet row. And that might seem odd, but let me show you why we're gonna use lookup spreadsheet row instead of create new spreadsheet row. When we go over to the action, we have the ability to look up a specific column, in this case, message ID, with a value, the message ID from the email that we selected in the previous step. This is looking up to see if this message has made it into the spreadsheet yet. But at the bottom of this step, we have create Google Sheets spreadsheet row if it doesn't exist yet. Now we can create that spreadsheet row with the message ID that we did not previously find, the sender name, the email, the subject, the body, and the time it was received. Just by checking that box, you can avoid duplicates so easily without needing to add extra steps. This is essentially two actions in one. We're looking for the row with this email's ID, and if it doesn't exist, we're creating it now. Now let's turn the zap on and see it in action. Now, I'll apply the right label to an email in my inbox. Label as, sheets, no attachment. And when I click on the labels folder down here, I can confirm that the label has been applied to my message. It should trigger the zap to run shortly. 
Now, you may need to wait a few minutes for the email to actually show up in the Google Sheet. For more advanced plans, Zapier checks your inbox basically every five minutes, but it could be up to 15 minutes if you're still on the free plan. And there it is. Row three has our new email from Matt with all of the data points that we wanted. Next, let's take a look at the Zap for exporting emails with attachments. Now, there's more steps here, there's four, so it's not gonna work on Zapier's free plan, but it is still easy to set up. So let's look at the trigger. Looking at the trigger, the trigger is still gonna be Gmail, but the event is new attachment. And this is a bit of a unique trigger, so hold on tight. The trigger will run for every new attachment. So if you have an email with four attachments, this zap will run four times. It's very useful, but we definitely need to avoid duplicate data and add some extra filters to make sure it doesn't run for everything in my inbox. So in that case, when we go to the trigger, we can add an additional filter here for the label. In this case, the label needs to be send to sheets. So this automation will only trigger when there's a new attachment inside of an email that is labeled send to sheets. Now let's take a look at our first action. It's gonna be a Google Drive step and it's gonna be find a folder. This is a similar pattern to what we did previous. The action is going to be finding a folder name which is composed of the message ID and the subject. We're gonna specify the folder and also check that checkbox that we saw earlier. Create Google Drive folder if it doesn't exist yet. If Zapier doesn't find a folder with a matching name, then it will create a folder instead using the name that we provided in this field. Now let's jump to the second action, upload file in Google Drive. Here, we're going to take the attachment and actually upload it to Google Drive. So pick your folder, which is actually the ID from step two, and the file is gonna be the attachment, which always says exists but not shown. When you see exists but not shown in a Zapier variable, that means that the variable refers to the file itself rather than a link to the file. This is exactly the variable that we want to use to upload an attachment from Gmail to Google Drive. We're gonna ignore the convert to document. We can ignore the file name and ignore the file extension. By leaving these blank, we'll just be using the original file name and file extension. Finally, we'll send all of this information to Google Sheets as a new row. The action will be lookup spreadsheet row. Once again, we can use this to create a row if no matching item is found. In the action, we'll configure the search to look for a row based on the contents of its message ID column. We'll tell it to look for a row with this specific message ID retrieved from Gmail. As you can see, we've enabled the checkbox that says create Google Sheets spreadsheet row if it doesn't exist yet. Since that's enabled, we can configure the data that will be mapped to each column, the sender name and email, the subject, the body, and the time the email was sent. And of course, we're now also mapping a link to this email's attachment in the attachments column. This link will open up the Google Drive folder we created in step two, where all the attachments for this email are stored. Sharing a link to a single folder is much simpler than sharing a link to each individual file. The new attachment trigger makes this a pretty unusual zap, so I'll quickly explain how the whole thing works. For the first attachment in a newly labeled email, this zap will create a new folder in Drive to store the attachments in step two. Then, it will upload the first attachment to that folder in step three. Finally, in step four, it will create a new row in Sheets with the email's info and a link to the attachments folder in Drive from step two. For every subsequent attachment in that newly labeled email, it will find the folder that already exists, upload the attachment to that folder, and leave the spreadsheet row unchanged. In Gmail, I'm going to apply the send to sheets label to an email with multiple attachments. This one looks good. And I can confirm that the label's been applied by checking the labels folder here. So now we just need to wait for the email to show up in sheets. There it is. All of the email's data is in sheets along with the Google Drive link. When I open it up, I see all of the email's attachments in the same folder. We're all set. Before we wrap up, I just wanna give you one quick warning. 
always check your task limits in Zapier before mass exporting data. Sending a thousand emails or more to Sheets could easily use up your month's tasks in a single day. When you sign into Zapier, you should see your task usage and limit in the bottom left hand corner. I also want to note that you can create a similar automation in Make, which is a cheaper platform than Zapier overall for this type of export specifically. Unfortunately, connecting a personal Gmail to Make is much more difficult than Zapier, and you can check out our tutorial on that subject to learn more. Let us know in the comments below if you want to see the same process explored in Make, or if you want to see us cover a similar automation with Outlook, Excel, or Microsoft Power Automate. Putting your emails into a convenient spreadsheet makes it much easier to get the insights you need. And with the simple Zapier automation we showed you today, you can send your emails over with just one click. If this video helped you save some time, leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow.